what is up everybody welcome back to the eclectic beard so let's go around be looking at how did the counties of england get their names um kind of interested to see how that actually all worked out the history of england being so long and so many different influences that have uh rolled through there from roman and uh norse and just the people that settled the land you know that were already there beforehand just Really interested to see. We've explained many, many times how exactly the nation of the United Kingdom works. It's split over two main land masses, the island of Great Britain and part of the island of Ireland. And across these two land masses, the United Kingdom splits into four smaller nations, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. However, things can of course break down even further as these four home nations split, like many countries, into counties. It's the counties of just one of these nations we will be looking into to today, those being the counties of the biggest and most populated home nation of the United Kingdom, my home nation of England. England is made up of 48 counties, by some counts anyway, and each seems to have its own cultural identity and image. And th that's quite a few counties. Their names are perhaps one of England's biggest export. The names of these counties pop up all over languages, in the names of certain foods like the Cornish pasty and Cumberland sausage, to breeds of dog like the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and of course these names are used as names in other parts of the world, like the US state of New Hampshire. Even if you aren't from England and have never been here, it's likely many of these names will ring a bell in your brain. These counties also vary from huge exp- Not only like the state New Hampshire, but you've also got different like there's even towns here in the U.S. that harken back that you know are named after towns in uh, the U in England. So expanses of land to just singular cities in their greater areas. So today, let's look into how the counties of England got their names, and hopefully one day in the future we can look into the counties of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland too. However, just to make things clear, what counties am I covering exactly? As I said, I aim to tackle 48 counties, but by some counts there are more and less. It's because these county borders differ depending on circumstances and many other things. I'm focusing on the ceremonial counties, which were formalised in 1997, as these are the traditional counties of England most people have heard of. Day to day though, many of these counties are split into smaller patches, like how Devon is the ceremonial county, but in reality it's governed as three counties, Devon, Plymouth and Torbay. It's a minor detail, but I know some of you in the comments will want to point it out. And speaking of Devon, let's start just west of that county, in the deep southwest of England, with Cornwall. This county has a very strong unique identity, even with their own language, and the name is thought to come from that language, with the name of a tribe that once lived here, the Cornovi. This name is thought to mean horn people, due to Cornwall's horn-like shape. And as mentioned, we have Devon. That's pretty interesting. Horned people. And looking at it, okay, I could. Into Cornwall's east, known for its beaches and Dartmoor. The name is too thought to come from the Celtic natives, the Dumoni, whose name is thought to relate to the deep valleys of Devon. Northeast of Devon, we have Somerset, a place best known for its cider and the village of Cheddar, which, yes, the cheese is named after. The name sounds like the season of summer for a good reason, as it comes from Old English and means the people who live at Somerton, with Somerton being a settlement there. This settlement's name is thought to mean summer settlement, hence why it relates to the season. Season. It's crazy how far back some of these things relate to, and just my goodness. It city of Bristol and its surrounding towns is actually a county unto itself. Bristol is a famous city, known for being the birthplace of Blackbeard, Clifton Suspension Bridge, Skins, and Ardman Animation. The name does actually relate to bridges, thought to mean the meeting place by the bridge, in relation to the many bridges across the River Avon. Going back south, however, southeast of Devon, we have Dorset, another seaside county. It's the pebbles of one of its beaches as to where the name is thought to possibly come from. It may be from Britonic and mean place with fist-sized pebbles, which are very big pebbles indeed. And it's place with how do you get okay. Anyways, that goes still, that goes back, but it's an interesting way of naming something. 
From here that we run into a word forming element, you're going to be sick of by the end of this video, Shire. From my calculations, 24 of these 48 county names end with Shire. That's half of them. In fact, sometimes the counties of England are known as the Shires of England. And it's a word that inspired Tolkien to name the realm of the hobbits the Shire. This is an old English term and simply means things like province slash stewardship slash district. So it's no surprise to see it pop up so much. A lot of the time, the part that precedes Shire in these counties County names relates to a major settlement in that county, so apologies if I get a little repetitive with these. The first shire we come across is a Wiltshire, the home of Stonehenge. Wiltshire is named after the town of Wilton in the county, which in turn comes from the river Wiley that goes through the county. Then we have Berkshire, which the internet tells me is known for sheep, which simply means hilly place. And below Berkshire we have Hampshire, home of the historic- That's three quick sh uh, shears right in a row cities of Southampton and Portsmouth. And the Hamp in Hampshire comes from the Hamp in Southampton, with Hampton popping up often in England and means a water meadow. Mo Aha. Interesting. Did not know that. All right, cool. Moving away from Shires for a moment, we have the Isle of Wight, England's only entirely island-based county. There's a few ideas as to where this name comes from, but the most popular theory is that it relates to lifting slash raising, as the island is raised out of the sea. And east of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, back onto the mainland, we have Sussex, which is actually split into the two counties of East and West Sussex. East Sussex is the famous city of Brighton, and West Sussex has, well, me. This name relates to Britain's ancient residents of the Saxons, who came from northern Germany slash Denmark. It simply means a land of the South Saxons. And there used to be a land of West Saxons too with Wessex. And we still have a land of East Saxons, which we'll cover in a moment. Dude, just how far back these things reach as far as the naming and stuff like that and the meaning behind it. But also, just... I don't know, dude. It, it's for me. It's it's interesting as hell because the the descriptor being <laughs> still, you know, being the reason why it's named what it's named, and it carrying on, you know, the so many places like names change over years. So that's for me. That's just crazy. Of course, and again, two hundred year country here. So you know. And further southeast in England, we have Kent, famous for Dover and its white cliffs. As this is the part of England closest to Europe, it has a name of Roman slash Greek roots, though it's thought to ultimately derive from an old British Celtic word, meaning coastal district, due to its location. Moving west of Kent, we have Surrey. Potterheads will know this county as the likely home of the fictional Little Whingen, where Harry Potter himself lives. Surrey simply means a southerly district, as it's south of the most famous place in the UK. So, Surrey just means Southern District, that's... London. And as for London, it's split into two counties. The city of London is its ancient core, and Greater London and its surrounding boroughs like Croydon in the south and Enfield in the north. We don't know where exactly the name London comes from, but there's a range of ideas from being named after an ancient king called Lud, to it coming from ancient Celtic words meaning wide, flowing river, in relation to the Thames. As for why one of these counties has a city of attached to it, and why the other has Greater attached to it, I'm sure you can figure out. And as mentioned, we have the land of the East Saxons, that is with Essex. UK TV fans will know this county for Gavin and Stacey, and the reality show which states that Essex is in fact the only way. This isn't the case, however, as west of Essex, we come back to the Shires with Hertfordshire. This county is named after the settlement of Hertford, with this name meaning crossing for deer. A hart is an old name for a stag, and a ford is a part of a river low enough to cross. And as for oh, Buckinghamshire, really cool. this too comes from the town of Buckingham. Ham. With this town's name, we have Ham, like in Hampton, meaning water meadow, and the former part is thought to come from an ancient landowner called Booker. And yes, it was the Duke of Buckingham who the Queen's primary dig was named in honour of. Oxfordshire. So, it's quite a. like just mashing of names basically to take and get to Buckinghamshire.
The county is once again named after the city of Oxford, most known for its university of course, and this is a pretty easy one to figure out, especially as we've already covered Hartford. If Hartford was a Ford slash crossing for Hart slash deer, then it should come as no surprise that Oxford is a Ford slash crossing for Oxen. The Gloucester in Gloucestershire comes from a town yet again, and it's thought to mean bright place, though what was so bright about it I'm not too sure. But some <laughs> think this bright relates to bright in the clever sense of the word, not in the well-lit sense, and just north of here on the Welsh border is Herefordshire, named after the town of Hereford. We have yet another crossing, but for Hera, a Hera is an old term for formation of soldiers, so the name means soldier crossing. Huh. We're still carrying on with- That's interesting. That, I, I'm loving the, the what etymology of, the, you know, the explanation of, you know, what the words and everything like that means. And, and, the root of them that's that's really cool with shires with worcestershire most famous for their source and its tricky pronunciation once again it's named after a town that being worcester which is believed to come from a name of a tribe who once lived there like oxford warwickshire is too well known for its highly regarded university in the town of warwick with warwick meaning dwelling by the weir with a weir being a small man-made dam in a river and then we have northamptonshire once again we have hampton which means water meadow so here we have a northern water meadow which went on to be the name of a city which went on to be the name of a county. Bedfordshire is named after the market town of Bedford which once again relates to a ford crossing and possibly an old Saxon sheaf of this land called a bidder, not an actual crossing for actual beds I'm afraid. And <laughs> Cambridgeshire to its east is named after Cambridge which is too known for its university. The bridge in Cambridge relates to an actual bridge that being a bridge over the river Cam the Cam Bridge. This is incredibly logical etymology. We can take a brief break from Shires luckily with Norfolk and Suffolk. These names simply This is, I'm, I'm just this is so cool. Like just, this is really cool mean Norfolk and the South Folk, which are two incredibly simple to understand. And then we have England's smallest county, Rutland. No one actually knows what happens here. The name is thought to possibly mean Rota's land, with Lotta being an old chief in the land. Their name is thought to possibly mean cheerful slash bright, which is unexpectedly pleasant. Back to the shires I'm afraid however, as west of Rutland is Leicestershire, home of the unexpected underdogs of the Premier League a few years back. The county is named after the city of Leicester. This is the first time we have spotted the Cester slash Chester suffix. This means town, but specifically a Roman town. So the city's name is thought to mean a Roman town by the river Ligor, which is thought to be a former name of the river uh, Saul. That... Next up we have the dullest name county. Okay, so that makes... I... That's pretty cool. That makes sense. The reason why we call that, you know, the Roman town, but basically, yeah, okay. That's I. Again, I I love stuff like this. I absolutely love stuff like this. The West Midlands, named so due to being the west of the Midlands. However, it's full of popular cities such as Birmingham, Coventry, and Wolverhampton. And to the north of the West Midlands, we have Staffordshire, popular for their dog breed. Here we have yet another ford, with the former part of this name meaning riverbank slash shore. As for Shropshire, this too is named after a settlement, though that settlement is now called Shrewsbury, with Shrewsbury thought to mean the fortified place in the scrub. Cheshire is named after the city of Chester, which as we mentioned simply means a Roman town. Why Lewis Carroll named his books Cat after this county however I am not too sure. Derbyshire is named after the place of Derby, which comes from an old English and means a deer village. Robin Hood's Nottinghamshire is named after the city of Nottingham, which means homestead of snot people, with snot being a former chief here. Not the most pleasant name I'm sure we can all agree. And Lincolnshire is named after the city of Lincoln, which is a Latin name coming from a word meaning pool slash lake. Apologies for whizzing through these shires just then. They're just starting to make my head spin. That's a lot of, sh that's a lot of them though. I mean, it's, but it, it's still, the way they come up with the names and just some of them being self-explanatory, at least once you hear the explanation for it and you, that makes complete sense. But some of them, you know, denoting Roman towns and stuff like that. It just, for a small little place, that's a lot of counties. Trying to take and memorize all these would be kind of interesting.
Though the biggest shire is of course Yorkshire, the York part of this name comes from the city of York and is thought to mean yew tree estate. Yorkshire is so large that it's actually split into four counties, three of these are simply called North, West and South Yorkshire, though East Yorkshire is actually called the East Riding of Yorkshire. The other parts of Yorkshire are known as ridings too, but the word isn't present in their official names. Riding is a term of Viking origin and simply means a third part, as historically Historically, Yorkshire was split into three of these ridings. It makes sense for the word to be of Viking roots as Yorkshire really was the hub of the Viking conquest of Britain. Next up we have the county of Greater Manchester which contains perhaps the second most well known city in England outside of London, Manchester. The greater part relates to the wider area but Manchester itself is actually thought to mean breast like hill due to the shape of hills in the area. I feel like more people should be talking about this. West of Greater Manchester we Hills like breast, so I mean that's that's not a bad thing to be you know named after. We have Merseyside, which contains another famous English city, Liverpool, home of the Beatles, of course. The county's name comes from the River Mersey, with the name Mersey meaning Boundary River, maybe because it's so close to the Welsh border. And we have one final shire, Lancashire, which is named after the city of Lancaster, which means Roman town on the River Loon. Continuing up north, we have Cumbria, the northwesternmost point of England. And we actually have an entire video about this name, somewhere on the channel. This is actually a Celtic name and means land of the Cumley, the people who live there. This relates closely to the Welsh name for Wales, Cumley, as they are both Britonic words meaning fellow countrymen. East of Cumbria we have County Durham. This is named after the town of Durham in the county and the name simply means a city on a hill as it is well a city on a hill. And above Durham is the county of Tyne and Ware which contains most noticeably the wonderful city of Newcastle upon Tyne. This county is simply Simply named after the two rivers that run through it, the Tyne and the Ware. And finally, we reach England's northernmost point, Northumberland. This name is pretty darn simple, especially once you know there's a river called the Humber nearby. This name simply means the place north of the River Humber. And there you have it, from Cornwall and its Horn people, Manchester and its not safe for work hills, and the many, many shires. This has been a journey across my home nation of England, and how its counties got their names. That's an interesting video. I enjoyed this. That The names of these counties going like so far back, like the, their, their, the word origin being rooted so far back, and you know, from before time of like the Romans and then the Romans, you can see like the Norse or the Viking um, influence as well. And some of them like just really cool to take and see. And again, 48 counties, like that's not a big spot for 48 counties. So I might have to take and try to learn all of them in their uh, place and uh, have find a quiz of it or something like that. So really cool though. Really, really cool. Very much enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I'm have to find more stuff like this. Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.